Hey everybody, Mark Edward Lewis here with Cinema Sound, and we've gotten an awful lot of uh, folks asking us about, you know, where do we put speakers, and we've got tons of that up there for you, but a lot of people have asked, look, if I can't get my speakers in exactly the right position, what do I do? I mean, not everybody, especially in the consumer world that just want to set up a nice home theater system, can know what to do about that. Well, it's a great question, and I just want to answer it here really briefly in the video. Um, yes, there are those uh, little devices where you stick a microphone, and it may even come with your head unit, that you turn it on and it susses everything out and does an EQ and a balancing and all that. But l let's be clear. I mean, unless you can get your speakers in exactly the same position to the listening area all the way around the subwoofer the left the center the right the surrounds if you can't do that whatever we have to do to fix that degrades the sound and most of you probably don't have treated rooms for which you can you know uh, you know solve reflection problems so whatever we're going to do is going to degrade the sound we can get it close to great but if you're like, wow, I got this room where the, my, my surrounds are right here, or I got a situation where my subwoofer has to be over here, or I want to put them on the ceiling, something like this, you're going to have an issue. But here's how we solve that. We don't solve it by just turning up the speaker that's farther away. Why? Well, because the way your brain works, if a speaker is closer than another speaker, then that close speaker is always going to sound louder to your brain than the speaker behind. And in fact, so much so that you're going to have to turn this back speaker up so much louder that you're going to create all kinds of problems, not to mention phase problems and comb filtering and all this other stuff that's going to happen. And it's just going to be late. The sound from here is going to your head is going to be late. Secondly, regardless of where your speakers are, you want them to be pointed at you. You don't want to be kind of sort of an angle or, or have them this way so it's like on a ceiling where it's just coming over your head or it's pointing at your navels or it's on the floor pointing up at the ceiling. You want those tweeters and the speakers faces in general pointing at the listener where their heads are. Now where their arms or stomachs are right at their heads. Not over their heads but that's really critical. If we can't do that it's never, no, there's no way to fix that. Then lastly, what we want to do, and most head units after 2009 have the ability to delay individual speakers independent of each other, which is super great. And head manufacturers know that nobody can get their speakers in exactly the right place. And so they put delay in knowing that that's really the best way to solve a speaker issue. Now we have an article on several articles on this on Cinema Sound as to how to fix this and how to do it. But I'm just going to tell you really briefly. Um, you know, uh, there's also videos about how, what levels you should put your speakers at and, and what distances, but let's just talk delay. Delay doesn't solve the problem of having like your speakers in the right position, but it fixes it quite a bit because if we can create sort of a virtual distance where all speakers are the same, then we can balance the room a lot easier and make changes and even EQ it or whatever you want to do as long as they're facing us. So what's the delay? Well, most most of the time at sea level um, between 72 degrees and 75 degrees Fahrenheit sound moves at 1.1308 milliseconds per foot that means for every foot um, uh, that sound travels it takes 1.1308 milliseconds so if your room is a little bit warmer uh, or if it's even hot you know if it's cold you're gonna want to make that number less maybe 1.2 milliseconds per foot but you know, to be super accurate and super fun, I just call it 1.1308 milliseconds per foot. Then you take a measurement with a measuring tape or a, whatever you want and measure each speaker and write it down. How far is it from your head? Not a general space, but as accurately as possible. The middle person listening on the middle of your couch or wherever that is. Center, left, right, subwoofer, LFE, left surround, right surround. Where is that? Write them all down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the speaker that is the furthest away and that will be our reference because you can't delay a speaker that's further away the furthest away that's the one that has to be not delayed so if you have a speaker that's like let's say your left surround is call it 10 feet away um, from your listening position way way back there in a situation where maybe you've got your left and right speakers four feet apart from you in the magic triangle, right? Magic triangle, critical to have correct that at least the left and the right are the same distance from each other that they are to you. You got to get that part right. Um, once that's fixed, you're like, okay, four, we're 48 inches, we're four feet. 
from left and right to left and right to me, my face, not my eyes, my ears, where my ears are. Then we can go, oh, that speaker's 10 feet. All right, that's the longest. Let's say right surround is nine feet. That means it's a whole foot closer. Um, uh, that means that you have to take the distance from the longest distance away of the, of the longest speaker, in this case, 10 feet from the left surround, and subtract from that the closest, the next closest speaker, or whatever closer it is, in this case, right surround, we'll call it nine feet. That leaves you with a one foot distance and at 1.1308 milliseconds per foot. That means you have to delay the right surround speaker 1.1308 milliseconds. Let's say that the subwoofer is six feet away. Somewhere you got on a wall, somewhere somewhere not really close. Let's call it six feet away. Well, light in the same way, we're gonna take the 10 foot from left surround, subtract it from, subtract from it the subwoofer, which is six feet, leaves us four feet, so then you'd multiply 1.1308 by four milliseconds, uh, by four, and that'll give you the milliseconds that you want. Let's say the left and right are in the correct position, but they still need to be delayed. That means they're four feet from us. Again, 10 feet minus the four feet for both of them, even though they're in the right position, because we're delaying all speakers except for the one farthest away, they all have to be delayed. So left and right are gonna be delayed, 10 feet minus four, which is, uh, six, uh, six times 1.1308 milliseconds. That's how much that delays. And let's say you've done what most people do. And that is you put left center, right in a straight line. And even though you're like, well, then they're all the same distance. Well, no, they're not. If you've done geometry at all, you know, in a circle, that means that the center channel is closer to you. Bummer. And let's say maybe it's six inches closer to you than the left and right, which isn't that unusual when you put them in a straight line like that. Well, what do you do then? Same thing. 10 feet from the left surround minus the, what well, this would be now six inches too close, which would be then three and a half feet subtracted, whatever that is, six and a half. Is that right? Six and a half times 1.1308 milliseconds. That's how far those have to be delayed. Now, do you have to be perfectly accurate with this down to the decimal? No, just round to the nearest millisecond and you're probably gonna be okay since you know the amount of measuring, you weren't doing it with a laser tool. I mean, unless you were, and you can be as accurate as you want, especially if your head unit will let you get down into the decimals of milliseconds. But that's how you delay your speakers so that you get everything sort of in a virtual same distance, yeah? So once you have that in place, then and only then do you do your volume balancing with pink noise or, or tones or whatever that is. Um, and uh, you store that as a preset, don't let anybody mess around with it. And you're going to see a lot more efficient use and a, a lot better uh, recreation of the surrounds that you have. Now, last thing, if you uh, do everything you can to not, N-O-T, not put speakers on your ceiling, it's just for so many reasons. First of all, you're putting them on a wall, which makes speakers sound terrible. Um, and then you're putting it on up, sometimes up on a corner of, a, of a, uh, the ceiling with the wall. So now you're actually putting it on two walls. Plus it's up in a corner like this sometimes where that creates its own horrible ambiences. And usually people forget to tilt them down. We just saw a member do that and say, hey, look at my new ceiling mounting. We're all like, oh, what? And they're actually pointing straight across the ceiling, which then creates further reflection issues. You're actually hearing the speaker off the ceiling itself more than you're actually hearing the speaker, which is like the worst possible thing. Not to mention that it's very likely now way far away, so far away from the listening position in comparison to the other speakers that you're gonna have to drive those speakers really, really hard and you know, most surround speakers are teeny in home systems and it's going to overdrive them. They're just not designed for that. So please don't put them on the ceiling if you can avoid it. Put it somewhere else. If you must put them on the ceiling, don't buy cheap speakers. Buy robust speakers because they're going to have to really drive in order to reach you at the same volume that your left, center, right and your subwoofers are going to be. So hopefully this helps you with your your consumer systems, um, figure out how to deal with delays. And if you're doing this in a studio, don't delay them. Just do everything you can to get them in the exact right position. You'll be very happy you did and your mixes will translate. For home studio systems, you know, it's a little less important, but if you want to recreate what the original mixers wanted in their films and their television, and you can't get the speakers in the right places, use the delays, then tune your rooms and don't put anything on the ceiling. 
Hopefully this has been very helpful and uh, we've got all kinds of articles for you about this on Cinema Sound and go avail yourselves. Until then, we'll see you at home in the home theater.